spiritual gifts introduction from the book rain right now lord from fellowship of the martyrs dot com we are three part beings body soul and spirit so who benefits most from fat brainy spiritually weak christians do we know how to feed the poor in spirit do we know how to pour ourselves out spiritually is there even such a thing what can we pour out on them how do we do it are we supposed to yep you're supposed to take the gifts that you were given and invest them into other people you're supposed to take all the Jesus in your cup and pour it out on others just as you would with physical resources you're supposed to spend your spiritual resources on others as the charisma of the Holy Spirit was poured out onto us so we should pour it out on one another can I prove it you betcha I'm not just spouting off here God showed me where to look to prove it the word used in the Greek to refer to the gifts of the Spirit is charisma hence those who believe the gifts are real and for today are called charismatics it is basically simply the Holy Spirit but from his presence comes multiple weapon systems this verse below says that we are to equip each other for this war by sharing the spiritual gifts that we have been given in fact it's a command and it infers that if you don't you're not a good steward first Peter 410 King James Version as every man hath received the gift charisma even so minister it diaconeo the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold poikilos grace charis of God the Greek word charisma is Strong's number 5486 and is translated 17 times as gift or free gift and defined as follows one a favor which one receives without any merit of his own number two the gift of divine grace number three the gift of faith knowledge holiness virtue number four the economy of divine grace by which the pardon of sin and eternal salvation is appointed to sinners in consideration of the merits of Christ laid hold of by faith number five grace or gifts denoting extraordinary powers distinguishing certain Christians and enabling them to serve the Church of Christ the reception of which is due to the power of divine grace operating on their souls by the Holy Spirit the Greek word diakoneo is translated here as to minister but the Strong's definition is much richer one to be a servant attendant domestic to serve wait upon to minister to one rendering ministering offices to to be served ministered unto to wait at a table and offer food and drink to the guests of women preparing food to minister ie supply food and necessities of life to relieve one's necessities to provide take care of distribute the things necessary to sustain life to take care of the poor and the sick who administer the office of a deacon in Christian churches to serve as deacons to minister to attend to anything that may serve another's interests to minister a thing to one to serve one or by supplying anything poikilos is translated here manifold but defined as strongs as of various colors variegated of different sorts it is translated eight times as diverse and twice as manifold the charisma isn't one flavor the Holy Spirit is a rainbow and when he is in us he can manifest in a whole bunch of different ways as with a prism the amount of light that can come through is simply a matter of how transparent it is the more transparent we are the more of the Holy Spirit can be seen and used through us in all the different colors if God has given us a particular color and somebody else needs it we should share the Greek word charis is translated grace in this passage grace that which affords joy pleasure delight sweetness charm loveliness grace of speech number two goodwill loving kindness favor of the merciful kindness by which God exerting his holy influence upon souls turns them to Christ keeps strengthens increases them in Christian faith knowledge affection and kindles them to the exercise of the Christian virtues number three what is due to grace the spiritual condition of one governed by the power of divine grace the token or proof of grace benefit a gift of grace benefit bounty number four thanks for benefits services favors recompense reward 
Okay, I'm sure you're already thinking that I'm interpreting that verse incorrectly. You probably looked up the NIV version of that verse, and it says, 1 Peter 4.10, Each one should use whatever gift he has received to serve others, faithfully administering God's grace in its various forms. Yeah, it does sound like you're just supposed to use your gift wisely to serve others, not pour it out on people. But try Young's literal translation, 1 Peter 4.10, Each, according as he has received a gift, to one another ministering it, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. How about Darby, 1 Peter 4.10, Each, according as he has received a gift, charisma, ministering it to one another, as good stewards of the various grace of God. Wow, I love this one. This is the Wycliffe New Testament. 1 Peter 4.10 Each man, as he hath received grace, ministering it into each other, ministering each to other, as good dispensers of the manifold grace of God. Ministering it? Don't they mean ministering with it? Using it effectively? Well, that too. But I'm just pretty sure this verse means that you should steward the gift that was given to you by giving it into other people, as the Lord directs. We are all to be good dispensers of the manifold, multifaceted, variegated charis of God. Are you doing that? Let's look at the King James again. 1 Peter 4.10 As every man hath received the gift, charisma, even so minister, diaconeo, the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The same what? The same gift you just got. Distribute it to others. What else do you have to share except what's inside of you? By giving it away, you'll get more. That's God's economy. People that say the charisma aren't for today say you can't lay hands on someone and have them receive the Holy Spirit. But that's exactly what this verse commands us to do in all his flavors and colors. People that believe in the charisma will lay hands on people to transfer the gift of tongues, but they don't seem to get that the application is the same for all the various flavors. It's not a one-time thing either. Whatever we have, we should share. If we get something new, we should bring it to the body and share. That's how everybody gets fully equipped. We are to pour our gifts out onto each other. We are to share all that we have with those in need. We are to empty our cup onto those around us. Anyone that hoards that which God has given and buries it in the ground will be punished severely and cast into the darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Read the parable of the talents, Matthew 24, 14-30. How can it not apply? You have physical, emotional, and spiritual assets. You should be sharing all of them. Still not buying it? That you can pass out gifts of the Spirit? Well, you can't exactly. God's not going to let you give something to somebody that's not ready for it, or he doesn't want to have it. And it's not about you anyway. But you most definitely can be the vehicle that transfers the gift that he's given you to someone else. Or you can at least be willing and try. Don't believe me? Want me to prove it? Good. That's very Berean of you. More on this from fellowshipofthemartyrs.com.